Okay. Hey everyone, can you hear me okay? <clears throat> hello, hello. Yes, fantastic. Okay. Hi everyone, lovely to meet you all. Um, as you can tell, I am not Sasha. I'm sure she's prepped you all, but I'm manning the fort um, this week and I'm very excited about it. Um, just making sure everything is good. Okay, Thomas just told me that the lecture slides should be uh, up now. Um, I was just trying to sort that out because I didn't have permissions to do that. So they, they, those should be up available now. So you can give that a, a test. Um, they might be slightly different than what we present and there might be some stuff that um, is slightly off because these are my the slides I used last term. Um, but the, the core ideas are exactly the same. Yeah, it might take a minute to come through. Exactly. Okay. Um, we're past five past. Let's see how many people are there. A hundred people. Nice, nice, nice. And growing and growing. That's good. Um, okay. So, well, we don't really need to do introductions, but really quickly, my name is Jake Renzella. Um, I also lecture this course um, in other terms. So I taught in 22T2, for example. Um, so you, maybe you've seen a, a, an old video or something like that pop up where I was delivering the course. But Sasha and I work really closely together. So we're, we're both really <clears throat> across the content. So it's going to be a good time. I also teach Comp 1531 here, um, which is Fundamentals of Software Engineering, which is a course that many of you may take. Um, potentially actually next term in, in, uh, next year and I'll be teaching it in T1. So I might actually see a lot of you again. So today, what are we doing? We're recapping two dimensional arrays. I'm sure there's lots of questions and things about that. And we're also going to be introducing, um, pointers, which is going to be really fun. Although they're one of the, um, concepts that can cause a bit of pain at the start. So it's interesting that Sasha's left, left me with that topic, but hello, welcome. Um, are we good to get straight into it? Do you have access to the lecture slides? Never mind. There's now a new link for the lecture slides. Thank you for that, Tom. Fantastic. Okay, let's get straight into it. So, last week, I'm hoping, <laughs> you can all correct me if I'm wrong, you reinforced one-dimensional arrays and introduced two-dimensional arrays. Um, so things with grids or, um, you know, multi-dimensional series of data. Um, today, we're going to just be looking at pointers. So I'm going to skip through that. That link is probably wrong, so we're going to skip through that as well. Um, so let's just get to the conceptual recap of a two dimensional array. So you should all be familiar with one dimensional arrays, which is just essentially having a series of the same data type, um, stored in a reference to a single, um, contiguous piece of memory. So what that means for, an, for a one dimensional array, you could have an, an array of integers, for example, and you could store N integers, um, in memory with the one identifier that references that variable. Two dimensional arrays are not a new concept. It's the same sort of idea, except that rather than just storing a single series of data, well, it's, it is exactly the same thing, but each element that you store is also a series of data. So if you think about it in that term, right, a two dimensional array is not a new concept or even a language mechanism at all, really. Um, it is a one dimensional array and the element type that it's storing is a one dimensional array. Does that sort of make sense? That idea? It's not really a different concept, right? So just as you would store an array of integers, you can also store an array of arrays. And what that allows us to do is construct this grid like structure. If the array is uniform, which, um, for whatever reason, 90% of the time, um, they are non-jagged, which is basically saying you've always got a smooth grid here, if that makes sense. So we won't cover, um, you can sometimes have like three elements here, or four elements here, two elements here. We don't do anything like that. Okay. Um, and there is some unique syntax around the two-dimensional array to help us, um, 
access each element. So here, for example, if we have an array of uh, three columns and four, uh, sorry, four columns and three rows. Yeah, that's right. Um, the zeroth, zeroth element is to the top left. And then, you know, the second number is referring um, to, the col uh, to the columns and the first number is referring to the integers. And by combining those two um, accesses, we can access any element in our array um, sort of randomly. Any questions on the concept so far? You all seem a little, little quiet. No, is it you? So you guys got to tell me if this is, if I'm boring you or if this is useful, um, just give me, give me some feedback as we go. Okay. Well, that was a really quick. <laughs> All right. So why don't we do, um, do you want to do a quick, um, write some code together to construct some 2d arrays? Um, or if you're, if you, if we can do a poll, if you all just want to move on to pointers, we can just move on to pointers. Um, maybe we'll do a quick poll. Oh, there's Q and A's now. That's cool. Okay. Um, what do we want to do? 2D array concept recap again, 2D array code writing, and then we can just go move on. I'm bored. Okay. Oops. Okay, it looks like it's going to be some code writing, which is excellent. Now I'm going to, well, we'll let the polls come in a bit, but. Okay. <clears throat> okay, we'll do some code writing. Fantastic. So. A couple of caveats. Um, uh, yeah, so a couple of caveats. Um, I'm using, so Visual Studio Code, just like you do. Mine might look a little bit different. It's just the theme that I like and I didn't really uh, have time to change it all to the setup that you guys are using at the moment, but it's exactly the same functionally. Um, the other big difference is that I'm, I'm just running this all locally on my, on my Mac. So I don't have DCC for example, but everything, I'm going to use a different compiler, but everything's going to work exactly the same. You don't have to worry about any of that. Okay. All right. So, well, first of all, we've got to write the bare bones program. So int main, right. Um, we'll put the void in there. Have we, we've been doing that this term. And let me know, can you read this okay? Let me close that. Let me, we'll zoom in one more time. All right, so um, we'll include standard IO as we always do. And we'll put some, you know, a 2D array recap program, Jake Lenzella. Why is that? Let's turn that off. Okay. All right. So we're including standard IO. That's nice. Uh, we have our main function here, which is where the program starts and we can start writing some code. So the first thing we'll want to do is um, declare our, uh, our array type or well, not our array type, declare our array itself. So when we say declare, what are we referring to here? What is the key? What does the word declare mean in this context? There's a few of these sort of verbs, declare, initialize, assign. Um, what does the declare keyword mean in this case? Professor M, that's a cool, to create. Type and size, Thauren says, set array type, int array. These are all good. Okay. Um, 
Is it Jiaoji? Jiaoji? Hopefully I'm saying that okay. That's the, the best answer that I, I like the most. It's, it's where we actually ask the operating system to declare the amount of memory we need to store what we want to store. And you're all correct. None of you are wrong. It's defining the shape of what we want to store, um, the type of it and the name of it. Yes, that's all true, the, the identifier. But it's also, that's the part where we go off to the operating system and say, hey, Mr. Operating System, can I please have enough data to store what it is that I want to store? Without communicating the size and the type of our variable, the operating system won't know how much memory we need to be assigned. So in this case, we can just ask, well, I want an integer array, but I don't want a single integer. You know, let's just call it my array. And I want this to be, you know, if I, if I just wanted an integer, that, that's all it would be. Um, I'd be happy with that. And so this would be saying, hey, Mr. Operating System, can I please have 32 bits to store my um, C integer? But we don't want to do that. We want to store, and not just one array, we want to store a two-dimensional array. So let's just put three rows and four columns in there. I think that's the right order. Um, so that alone is the declaration. That's a complete declaration. It's saying what type it's storing and the amount of elements it needs to store. So when this um, line of code would run in this program, um, the program asks the almighty OS for, if anyone's, some of you just said you came from a math lecture, you can quickly calculate. If you know the size of an integer, you know there's going to be 12 elements, three times four. You can figure out the, the amount of memory that this program would be having to ask for um, to be stored for um, the memory. Okay. So this is how we declare it. And again, it's type name. Um, It's column, right? And then row. Is that right? You'll correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, that's the declaration. Now, um, we can put some data um, into our 2D array. There's actually two ways to do this. In C, we can do a special declaration and an initialization in the one line. Um, it might be row column. What did the slides just say? I'm confusing myself. Three is the column. No, three is the rows. Four is the column. Three is the rows. Yes. Four is the column. Thank you. I confused myself. Um, so yeah. Okay. I don't know if you covered this last week, but we can... Alternatively, we can we can actually initialize the data in this um, straight away. Did you do this last week? Have you seen this before? So we could say like one, two, three, four. Um, you know, five, six, seven, eight. Whoops. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's just say that. Um, and what's wrong here? Then we need a closing bracket there. No. Nope. Semicolon. That'll probably be it. So have you seen this this construct before? Yep. Awesome. Okay. Um, sort of, I think frustratingly in C, <coughs> you can't do this anywhere else, which is really annoying. So you can't say later on, <coughs> I have this 2D array. I want to override all the data. I don't actually know the reason you can't do it. I'm sure there's some uh, old legacy reason, but so if you want to do this type of initialization, you must do it. <coughs> oh God, oh my God, excuse me. You must do it when you declare the array. All right, so let's let's keep it on this one. 
Um, why don't we run this program? I'm gonna bring up my console right here. You've been using DCC to compile all term. You'll continue to do so. I'm just gonna use something called GCC, um, 2D array dot C, and then I'm gonna add it, oops, add it to program, right? If I run that program, we're not going to see anything, but we didn't see any errors either, which is a good sign. So this code is all running um, quite nicely. All right, so we have some, we have our 2D array, we've put data into the array. What do you think the first thing we're going to do next is? Yeah, print it, print it, yeah. Well, okay, that's a good idea, <laughs> Panda. We can print out just a single element or we can print out the entire array. Um, why don't we just print out a single element? I like that. So we'll do a printf statement. Um, this should all look very um, familiar to you. We're printing out an integer. So we pass in percent %d for a decimal integer. And what we're going to print out is, well, so we need to get a single element out of the, um, of the array. So for example, we could get my array and how do we look up? This is sort of the third um, construct. We have, uh, we can, you know, access a value. So my array is called my array, but I can't just put this here, can I? So what do I need to put if I want to access, for example, the integer six? Remember it's rows and then columns. Okay, Theron, that was nice and quick. Oh, no, one, one. <laughs> okay, so, yep. So what what mistake um, that Taran first made it, or Theron is, is very, very common. Um, it's, we call it an off by one error. We always remember that in C in most languages, we start with a zero index. So it would be zero one. Um, and then it would be coming down, you know, down zero one. So you're exactly right. And we use the square brackets, um, as well. So one, so one, so it's saying access the first row and then access the first column that'll land up at a, um, single element. Put a semicolon there and we save the file and okay, let's see what we get. I'll bring my terminal back up. I'll run that compile again. That compiles no problems. I run the program and we get our six there, which is exactly what we wanted. Um, so already this is quite cool. We've constructed this sort of two dimensional array. We can put data into it and we can access a single, um, you know, element completely out of order, out of that construct. Um, very exciting. Why is there a percent? Great question. Um, you may not see the percent if you're following along. Um, my terminal is just trying to say that the uh, output has ended. It's because there's no new line after the integer. So if I run that, whoops, if I run this, I probably, yeah, I won't see it. Um, so my, my terminal is just, I've probably got some custom configuration and things like that. Um, where it's just saying that, hey, Jake, this is where the, there's no, you know, white space characters, for example. Because otherwise, if I had something like that, how would I know? Um, how would I know where that line was ending? Because it all just looks like white space characters. Good question, though. But we probably could just put a new line there. And I do, I think this, this is probably a good um, program for you, if you can to follow along writing with, cause we'll go pretty slow and I'm apologize cause they've, someone's mowing grass. All right. So this is access a single value randomly. And by randomly, we, do you know what I mean by randomly by it? We're just getting, we're pluck, plucking out an, an integer here, for example, six, right? We're not going through and accessing every single element in order. And so we, we say that that's a random access. Like uh, the Daft Punk album. All right, but print 
all elements. Yeah, <laughs> the, it's the Australian dream. Printing all, uh, to have grass to mow, I guess, is the Australian dream. Um, print all elements. We, we have to do this a bit differently, right? Um, we do not want to do, for example, although we could, you know, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 1. You get the idea, right? Although we could do this, in fact, you know, let's... Let's, let's run this. Oops. Hopefully that's not too loud. I apologize. I'm just thinking as well, maybe, do you think, um, would this be better if I did it like that? And maybe I moved my camera down here. Does that look better? Um, so if you can, if you see, right, if by doing this, I get one, two, three, four, five, you know, I'm getting all the elements printed out in order. Um, but what's the problem with it? Yeah, it's too repetitive. It requires too many lines of code. So we don't do this. We don't want to do this. The other thing here though, the reason why it's really good to sort of to do this is to, whenever you see, right? So this is something that as you get more familiar with programming, and I know some of you are already, um, some of you are already, you know, may already know a lot of this or be good programmers, but Whenever you see something like this, and it will come up in other contexts, but whenever you see lines of code that look almost the same, but not quite, especially if it's like a number is changing, um, that should always ring alarm bells in your head. We, we, what, as you get more experience, what you should be thinking is, oh, there, there is something in common here. Like all of these characters are exactly the same. There's something in common here. I can actually, can I abstract this somehow? Can I turn these, these characters here that aren't repeating, these are the only things that aren't repeating. Can I turn this into some sort of variable or something so that I don't need to repeat all these lines of code? And as you can imagine, if you had a really big 2D array, you wouldn't want thousands of these printf statements. So some, something to keep aware of. If you see something like this, where you see a lot of repetition, that should ring a warn, warning sign that, there's, there's another way. And yeah, absolutely right. We use loops. So rather than doing this, let's leave it though. Let's leave it down there. Um, we can actually use um, some, some while loops. So while, so first of all, we need to make um, some variables int i and we'll start it off at zero. Um, and then we'll do J as well. These are the common very uh, identifiers for indexes. And it's this convention that the first index is I, then J, then K. You don't usually need more than that. Um, and Nathaniel, we could make a, a function outside of main to do some of this, but we're going to just do it all in main um, for now. Oh, you delayed your question, but it was a good question. Okay. So we have this loop. What's the syntax for a loop? We just say while i is less than, um, no, you're right. While i is less than, we need it to be less than the number that we're um, that we're looping. So for now, um, let's just do three, and we'll talk about ways that we can improve this. So we're going to be looping through the um, rows first. So we have this loop. Um, it's going to go through the rows, like I said. So it's going to go through here, then here, then here. So if I just printed, I think the first step would be to do another printf statement in this loop. Oops. Yeah, that's fine. Another printf statement in this loop, but um, I will use my i integer here. And I'll just use zero here for now because I don't have anything else. 
Now if I run and compile this, oh, that's not, oh yeah, okay, we've got to add one to i. Um, we could also do i++. plus plus. Yep, you've seen all of this before. We get one and five and nine. And if we look at our data here, uh, that's what's happened there. I didn't want to do that. Sorry about that. There we go. Um, so what have we done here? We're getting one and five and nine. It's because we're accessing each row and then printing out the first element of each row. So we're printing out the number one, we're printing out the number five, and we're printing out the number nine. What we don't have a capacity to do is to then get the rest of these elements. We, we actually, we're facing the same problem as we faced down here, where we would have to do, you know, one, two, three. And this is better than what we were doing down here, right? But you can see it's the exact same thing. We, we abstracted away this first number into a variable. We looped over it and we incremented i each time. But we want to do the exact same thing for this second element. Do we all see that? So we apply that process one more time. And we make another loop. In this case, I'm just going to use a while loop. So while j is less than 4 this time, um, we're going to take this printf statement out. Now we went from, we would have needed, you know, nine printf statements here. Now we only needed four. What are we going to need in this case? Well, we've abstracted away that second element. And you can see there's actually no spots where um, we need to hard code an integer or a number. So we can just delete that. Ah, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Okay. Uh, what have I done wrong there? Four. Is it because of where I'm incrementing? Oh, it's because, yep, it's because I want this. We can do something like this. Yes, thank you. Ah. There we go. So um, once we finish looping through all of the columns, and again, it's reset which is really annoying. Um, we need to go back to the zeroth, col the zeroth column every time. Now, I so I has Sasha been using for loops for this stuff? Is that what you guys were saying? Or Tom and Sophia can let me know as well. Either one, both. We've done, okay, so what I can, I can also just refactor this back into a for loop example if you want. Do you want to see that? Yes, okay, cool. So, um, all right, so this would be four int i is less than three, sorry, i is equal to zero, initialize it i is less than three, and what do we do every time the loop runs? We increment i, um, and then this is going to be for uh, while int, oh, sorry, for int j is equal to zero, j is less than four, j plus plus. Uh, that means we don't need the increment here, and we don't need the increment there. It is much, much tidier, um, but under the hood, they're identical, right? Let's clear, let's um, compile this, and let's run this, and we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, all printed out. Absolutely beautiful. One thing we can do is that after we loop through all of the rows, sorry, all of the columns, I 
think we can do. Let's try this. Okay, that's the wrong. Oh, it's yes, 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 yes. That'll do it. I mean, that's that's good enough. Um, we can do something like something like that. That's fine. I'm out of water. So you guys are all over it, it sounds like. Cool. Any questions on two-dimensional arrays? No? Awesome. Nay, fantastic. Um, some things I'll just point out. We, I think, you know, sometimes when we do these examples, we, we use integers just because it's simpler. Um, but this, they, these, these arrays and these two arrays, 2D arrays can store any data type. They could store doubles or characters. I'm sure you're, you've spoken about that. Um, so it's just like typing coordinates of a grid. Yeah, pretty much. 2D's, 2D arrays are really commonly used to store grid-like structures, chess boards. Um, I think what you're doing in your assignment, for example, like a game grid is super common um, to use a 2D array because it gives you a nice analog to the data structure that we're storing. Um, what other functions can we use on arrays? Do you mean like actual built-in functions or like what other things can we do with them, Von? Um, that's a good question. I don't think there's, there's a, I don't think there's too many. In C itself, um, I'm just looking. You'd bet, but there's none that, I don't think there's really any that come with the language. Oh, you mean, okay, you mean functions that we make. I understand. Um, I got you now. There's a, there's a lot. I mean, there's there's huge amounts. Because arrays and 2D arrays are the, some of the building blocks of all future data structures. So um, there are sort of countless things you can do. But um, scan, store, print, there's searching. So like if you've got, an, like for example, if you've got this 2D array and I want to search for the number eight, Right, oh, I, it might not be in there. Um, how do you do that? So you need a way to traverse it, um, which is pretty much the exact same as printing though. Um, sorting is the big one. Have you said sort? No, sorting is the big one probably. Um, so where you've got an array and you need to order it. It might be an unordered array and we want to order it. And there's lots of different functions and algorithms that we can use to sort our array that we don't go into in comp 1511. Um, but one of my favorite things to look at actually is um, okay, it's not one of my favorite things to look at. Let me, let me calm down. But a, a cool thing to look at are these array sorting function algorithms. So they take different, um, of course there's an add. Let's map out the tasks for your Gantt chart in this list. So, God, that's a bit you know, my problems maybe look away, but so these are these are basically, if you think about it, these are just arrays of integers, and they're visualizing the height of the bar based on the size of the number, and then they're applying different sorting algorithms um, to reorder those uh, those arrays. Um, and then they're just visualizing the algorithm. So these are these are many examples. Different ways that we can manipulate arrays, usually in arrays of numbers. But there's a million, a million things we can do. 
All right, do we want to do a, I've got a Kahoot on 2D arrays. Um, you wanna do that and then we'll go and we'll have a quick break and then we'll do pointers for the last hour. Jackie, there's string length for an array. Can you do it on a 2D array? Um, 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 I don't think you can. The waiting music is playing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Apologies. There's a small, um, there's a small delay on the stream, as you probably already know. So it takes a few seconds for the feedback loop. Um, what was I saying? No, you can't do string length for a two D array. String, basically, if you think about it, string length requires a, a, an array, a single array. A two D array is not a single array. So, oh, you know what? No, 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 no. That's not true. It'll work, but it'll give you the length. No, it's not a string though, <laughs> sorry. Oh, you know what, now I wanna, now I wanna check. Cause the string length, if you give it a non-string array, does it just return? Oops. Does it just return printf percent d? And if I give it my array, I think it, it's either gonna give us an error or it's gonna give us four. Oh, whoops. Helps if I call the actual function. Yeah, it wants it to be in a, a, a car array. So I don't, oh, but I have an array of integers. Oh, this could work. String length is one. Yeah, so it's just not right. It's Yeah, it's because they're not, yeah, they're not, they're not, it's not an array. So string length needs an array of characters. Yeah, I don't know why it's giving a one. It's just doing something crazy. Anyway, that's completely off topic. Good question though. I thought it might get through somehow because a character is an int and we're storing an array of ints, but alas, alas, alas. I thought it might give us the, the length of the first uh, array. Okay, Kahoot time. We we're happy to do that. We have no more questions. I hope you've been paying attention because um, now it's, you know, now it's time to, oh no, I've lost the Kahoot. Oh my God, it's logged me out as well. It sucks. Where are my cahoots? Show me my cahoots. Library, okay, here we go. I need to turn, okay, I gotta do a few things. I need to turn the music off. I need to, Start this. It's Halloween themed, what's going on? Um, let me make this bigger. Uh, we'll do a classic mode. Okay, get ready to join. No players? What's going on? <laughs> Sophia and Tom, I expect you two to play as well. I don't expect you two to play, but you can if you want. Okay, there we go. People are really coming in. Whoa. <laughs> Tom's keen. 
We'll give it a minute. Yeah, um, the really sad thing is I can't hear the music because it goes through like the streaming software. So I'm sure it sounds really fun. Oh, people are piling. How many people are in the lecture? 120, nice. That's a really good turnout. Sasha's doing a good job, obviously. You guys having fun in, in Comp 1511? I want to hear the music. All right, are we good to go? All right, let's start. I've got 30 seconds um, per question. So it should be enough to get through the stream delay. I'll make sure my camera's not blocking it. I'll move it if I need to. Good luck everyone, GG. Not GG, GL. Yeah, let's move that. Which of the following is a valid 2D array declaration? I've even bolded and italicized the declaration. Answers are streaming in. Okay, well done everyone. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, it's the data type, the name, and then the, you know, some numbers. Um, fantastic. Not many of you clicked anything else, so let's not, uh, where's my button? Mouse, okay. Yeah, let's go next. It's not rigged, I'm not playing. Someone else is super jake. I got that wrong. <laughs> Tom. Oh, not good. KD, congrats. True or false? In C, you can sort different types of data in a 2D array. True or false? I really, really feel like I'm missing out because I can't hear the music. Okay, okay, 59 of you said false, 31 said true. Um, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Maybe you thought like different 2D arrays can store different types, but I did say in a 2D array, like in a single, I meant in like a single two dimensional array. Um, you can only store the type that you specify for each element, right? But I am curious why so many yeah, but Panda, that is still a, a an array of the, the same struct data type, right? Like that struct is a data type and it's or every element is that one type. Yeah, cool. Okay, KD still on top. Good job. All right, which of the following is a valid 2D array access? So if we access an array, a 2D array. I'm really going to figure out how to like pipe the audio out. Okay. Well done. 59 of you got that correct. Tom, hopefully you got it correct as well. You have the name of the array. In this case, it's a poorly named A. You have the, the row and then you have the column or the, the first and then the second. Very good. Okay. Is this the last one now? <gasps> KD. Ugh, drama. We lost KD. Um, Seskieski on top. Okay. This is the, the, the hard one. What is the amount of memory required to store the pointer to a 2D array of integers if the array is int array two, three?
the amount of memory required to store the pointer to, to a 2D array of integers. The array is int array two, three. Let's see. Yeah, brutal question. Brutal question. The nine of you who got that correct, how many of it was it just a joke? Was it just a guess? Or who who got that and can explain what why that answer is four bytes? <laughs> Sophia <laughs> Rich message retracted. Yeah, exactly right, Panda. The, the, it's a bit of a trick question, but do you want to, ex can someone explain it? Did someone get it right? <laughs> Poor Sophia. Who wants to explain it? Oh, let's get rid of that. Thought it said bits. Okay, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Clearly I'm out of a job too. Someone had, someone needs to explain it though. Or do we just want me to explain it? Um, and I guess this is sort of maybe a, a lead on to the, to the um, next topic of the lecture. But basically, um, the question is not asking how much memory is going to be stored in the actual array, in the actual two by three array. It's asking how much memory is actually required to store the, the reference to the 2D array. So when do we have, whenever we have an array, we actually have two sort of bits of memory. We have the actual array in the heap that would in this case be two times three times 32. Um, yeah, that's okay. Nothing, nothing teaches you better than, than a foreshadow. And then we also have um, the, the variable, right? Exactly right, Von, Von. Um, we also have the variable that stores where that array is stored. And that is just, um, a pointer, which is an integer. So it's just four bytes. So yeah, brutal question. And I have a fifth question, but I don't remember writing. I don't remember writing the question. It's a true or false. Okay. C supports 3d arrays. Okay. Remember the cahoots are just for fun. Everyone don't, don't stress. It's good to have a brutal question in there every now and then. Oh God, as well. Yep. Um, you can absolutely have three dimensional arrays. You can have four dimensional arrays. Although I will say I've never seen in, um, in industry or in practice in any code ever, actually, I, I don't think I can ever recall seeing a three dimensional array other than just like someone doing it for fun. Um, but it absolutely is possible. So they're multi-dimensional arrays. You would need like a 3D cube to demonstrate it. Um, yeah, there, there are other things you would do, but it's completely possible. It, it is it is a thing, right? It's just an, an array of an array of an array. But it's not like, I don't even know if that it's like that. Yeah, maybe for some 3D data visualization stuff, you would use 3D arrays, but I've never seen it. Not that I've seen everything. Anyway, how did we go? Okay, well done. Stringland sucks, says Skieski. And congratulations to... How did that work? Are there two of you? No, it's a different name. <laughs> Congrats. Okay, good job. Anyway, um, yeah, th that was a brutal question. But if you're now thinking, what the hell, Jake? You did me dirty. We've not spoken about pointers. Well... Um, we're about to, but let's have, do you want to have a five minute, um, coffee, tea, bathroom break, and then we'll get going straight on 12. You're just pissed off that I, that we had the, <laughs> the pointer question. Okay. We can close this now. Okay. I'll see you all in five minutes.
this. Hello. Go back here. Uh, okay. All right. We all back? We're good to go? You can hear me okay? Yes, no, maybe? Fantastic, all right. So now it's time for pointers. Um, some people say pointers are um, one of the trickier concepts to understand. Sophia and Tom, do you agree? You know, as a, as a really core primitive concept, um, they, I think it's safe to say, it's completely normal for it to take a few weeks for the real idea of pointers to really um, sink in. Do we all agree with that, Sophia and Tom? Um, they're not really that crazy. You will all, uh, all understand them. But um, give yourself, all I'm saying is give yourself some patience um, and be, be generous and kind to yourself with this topic because it is very abstract and can take some time. But um, um, but we've got lots of different ways to try and sort of explain what's going on with these pointers um, and some visualizations that I think will really help. So, but first of all, let's go through some of the lecture um, content. So we have variables, right? So yeah, yeah. So let's, you've had your break now. Let's, everyone's got to really pay attention because these, we use pointers in many more concepts that come later, um, like everything. But so if you're, this is my, you know, wake up, um, wake up call to everyone. All right. So we've got variables, yeah? Variables store some data in memory. We're all happy with that. We can have integers. We can have characters. I don't think we've done strings yet, have we? Or we might have actually, but you can have strings, which is just an array of characters. You can have arrays in a variable, for example. Um, and a pointer is just another type of variable. So it's another data type. And an integer stores a, 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 a full number, correct? An integer stores a whole number. A double stores a floating point. A character stores a character, right? What does a pointer store? It stores um, a memory address. So, in fact, let's go right here. Let's not look at that. Um, I'm going to get this open. This is what I like using for... What is that? I don't want that. I just want... Yeah. No, what is this? Go away. Okay. So... If this is our memory, right, um, in our computer, in our RAM, what's actually happening is that each block of memory, you know, I'm trying to think of like a nice way to do what I want here, but there's not really. Um, each block of memory, you can think of it has like some memory address. Something like that, something like this, right? The whole, the whole, no matter how much memory we have in our RAM, you know, I'm just making this up, right? It, this isn't exactly what it would look like, but our memory is addressable. Um, so I can, and, and when I put some data in my, in my, in my, you know, I store some data in a variable, um, the, the operating system is putting some data into one of these slots of memory that I have. And this, the size of the slots of the memory can all change depending on the, the address uh, size of the, of the computer and the different operating system and whatever it is. But basically, you can think of the memory as a series of these addresses that we can put some data into. And data can overflow. So we can have data that's like... Um, Let's say that yellow is like some actual data. We could have data that's like this big, right? 
and it would still be stored at address zero, but it takes up three address sizes worth of memory, right? But then you could have just like an integer um, that's, you know, a lot smaller. It's like that size, for example. And these would just be sitting sort of over their memory address. Does that make sense? Hopefully. But what a point is, all it is, is that instead of storing, for example, the number five or an array of three elements, right? You can see like an array of three elements would store three times the size of an integer. Right? So this is storing the numbers one, two, and three. This is storing the integer of five. A pointer, okay, stores not an integer, not a character, but a memory address. And so if you look at this element, what it's actually doing is pointing somewhere else. That's why it's called a pointer. And that, honestly, that's it. That is pointers. Conceptually, that's as hard as it, that's as complex as it is. Rather than storing a number, rather than storing a string like Jake, we're just storing the address of the location of some other memory in, mem in, in, the, in the computer's memory. A bookmark is a, is a um, let me think. It's, it's, it's a close analogy. I don't want to be too, yeah, it's, it, it's close. It's more of a, uh, it's like a, it's just like a residential address. It's just the location of somewhere else to go. The thing is though, you, yeah, the, the moving the bookmark analogy sort of breaks down, I think, but anyway, it's, it's pretty good. Um, but that's it. That's a pointer. So it stores a memory address of a variable. It's like a short, not to a file, um, Sashank. It's a shortcut to another piece of memory. So pointers is, is sort of our foray into actually manipulating um, memory ourselves. We get, now we can get sort of take over, the, open the cover and get into the computer's memory with pointers. Uh, but yeah, it's like a shortcut. You're right. It is like a shortcut, but to other memory. So it's very powerful because it means you can modify things in memory. Um, and this is the other place that trips up a lot of people is that there is some syntax specific to pointers um, that honestly, if the developers of the language of C just made better syntax constructs for this, it would be a lot less confusing, but because it's C there sort of archaic, um, but we're going to go through that. So we declare a pointer very similarly to the way we declare any variable. We give it the type that we're pointing to. So if we're storing an integer pointer, we can just type integer there. And then we give it the name of the variable. So it could just be, you know, my underscore pointer. But when we're declaring a pointer, let me just, let me do this in code. Let me do this in code. Um, okay. So if we just have a int, you know, my int, this is storing, this is storing what? Is the delay really big or are people not following along? Pakalatototo? <laughs> um, that's a great question. The answer is no. And I'll, we can talk about that maybe at the end of the, the lecture, why that's not possible. Um, yeah, exactly. We're just storing an integer there. Yeah. You know. All right. But what if I want to store a pointer...
to an integer. The problem is I can't just say like int, whoops, my int pointer. Let's just do it like this. The, I why, why won't this work? Like as in what I'm trying to say is what's the problem here? Yeah, there's no, exactly right, t, t, t wags. It's just an integer. It's just, it's not a pointer. So we need a way to say, I want to store not an integer, but an integer pointer. And that's what we use the staff, the asterisk for. So asterisk in a declaration, that's the really important there. In a declaration means a pointer to the type. So to an integer. Um, so we need to put um, that it's exactly equivalent. You may often, you may see this, these two lines are completely equivalent. These are the same thing. Some people prefer this method. Some people prefer this in one, five, one, one, we, we use this approach, not approach this syntax. Um, but they're both equivalent. Okay, so now what this is saying is that we want to store an a pointer integer. Um, exactly. Um, yep, so for example, integer pointer is going to be something like that. Okay. Uh, could I please give access to the lecture code? I absolutely can, but I might have to do it at the end of the lecture. Sorry, if that's okay because I don't have access to the directories. I apologize about that. I'll fix that for Wednesday. Um, can we think of int star as a new variable type? Yes, I, I would, well, yes, yes. It is a different variable type, absolutely. Think of it also as like a modifier to any type because you can also have, you know, double, Right, so it's like a modifier to a type. It's like take the whatever type it was. Now it's appointed to that. But yeah, it is a different type. So why do we need pointers? What what's the point of them? <laughs> um, so they help us do a few things that aren't otherwise possible. Um, so we've spoken often about. Okay, so karma, great question. At the moment, this is not pointing to my int. This is not pointing anywhere. I've not done anything with it. This is just how we declare it. So these aren't hooked up, let's say. Um, yeah, good question though. That was a really good question. Before we hook that up, let's just talk about why we bother with pointers at all and what they help us do. So the first thing is that we've spoken about if we have a function and we pass variables to that function, um, what happens is the parameters we pass in are um, copies of the data. So if I pass in an integer called four into a function, let, let, we can even quickly really do this, right? Let's just say, um, make a procedure, which is like, uh, I don't know, takes an integer, int five, oh, sorry, int, you know, x, let's call it x, x is now equal to 10. If I call, you know, int, well, let's just, we've already got an integer, my int equals 10, right? Let's print it. My int in main is this comma my int, right? So that's going to 
that's going to print what? This is going to print what? And while you tell me that, let's do the exact same thing up here. Oh, sorry. Let's, what am I doing? Let's make this five and we'll just call this half. If I print X here, what's this going to print? Shang how I can't tell if you're answering my first question or my second question. Well, let's just run this. Uh, that's the wrong program. Uh, what do I call this? Pointers. Okay, let's get rid of that one. This is saying you've got two of the same thing. Let's run this. So we can see here that my int in main is 10, right? So we start off integer as 10, we print it out, that's 10. We then call this half procedure, which takes that integer and, and assigns it five. That's not what I should have done. I should divide it by two, but whatever. Then we print out the value of it and it is five, right? So we've, we've changed the value. Um, but then when I print out my integer again down here, it's back to 10, right? Are we all, do we, are we all getting what, how, you know, that that is the normal behavior in C? Yeah, I mean, what a what a what a beautiful one word um, description of what's happening here, Juno Juno Zhao Juno Zhao, just the word stack, very very succinct. Um, yeah, we call this half function. It makes a stack frame, assigns integer the value ten, and so when it changes that x integer, it doesn't change down in main because that that change happened in a different stack frame. I don't know if Sasha's spoken about the, the term stack frame specifically in terms of memory, but that's why this is happening. The point of the matter, the point of the matter is when we call a function, we give it a parameter, it's a duplicate. It's copied, it's got a different piece of memory and the changes to it are local. They don't propagate. But sometimes, right, we don't want that to happen. What if this was an integer, but it was a really big piece of data? That means every time I call a function, I would need to duplicate that data. And as some of you may already know, one of the, the slowest things that our, we do in our programs is assigning memory. Um, or, uh, declaring memory. Like asking the operating system for memory is generally very slow. Um, the reason it's slow is because the operating system is really busy doing lots and lots and lots of things, right? You've written this program and it asks for some memory, but your program needs to be maintaining the, you know, the operating system is looking after Google Chrome. It's looking after the actual memory that the operating system needs. Spotify is probably streaming in all this music and it's still, so the, the, the operating system's constantly being barraged for memory. And so you say, hey, I need an integer. It's like, okay, no worries. I can give you an integer. But if you say, hey, I need this really big piece of data and the, the operating system might just be like, Hold on, I'm really busy with Spotify right now. I'll get back to you. And then you gotta wait, your program waits. Even though it seems really, really fast. Requesting memory is um, one of the slowest things we can do in our programs. And we wanna avoid it as much as possible. So it's a bit annoying that every time we call a function, we have to request memory to store the duplicated data. Okay? Pointers stop us from having that problem. Because rather than passing in a duplicate of all the data, we can pass in a pointer, and pointers are really small, so you don't have to ask for much memory, that points to that one big block of memory. Now, hopefully, that just that idea made sense to everyone. I'm not expecting you to go off and be able to do anything with it, but hopefully just that idea made sense. Did the idea make sense? Think of it this way, right? 
if I need to move a house, like I need to fiz- you know, like what's that movie um, where they're like fighting on the back of a truck that's moving the house? Who, what, what, what's that movie? So it was like a nineties. What Shrek? <laughs> Toy Story? No. Uh, what is it? It's like a fighting movie. I don't know. And they're like, they're transporting a house. Anyway, I don't know. I'm getting off topic. My point is right. <laughs> you guys are trolls. Um, my point is that, um, think of it as like, if you need to deliver, um, you know, a, a package to a, to a house, you don't move the house to the post office. You just move the, um, <laughs> Okay, <laughs> up's close enough. It's not... <laughs> yeah, right. It's a lot of work to put balloons on the house and move the house, right? That's a lot of effort. It's much easier just to write down the address of the house and move the slip. Do we all agree? It's the exact same thing here. A pointer is the address of the house. So rather than just, you know, doing what they did in up, we can just write down the memory address. It's the, you know, and, and move that the address. Um, so SB says, sorry, I'm still confused. What actually is an address? So go back to my diagram here. Memory, when, when we talk about memory, all memory is addressable or has an address. And a pointer stores an address that, and that's it. So if you look here, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys. <laughs> so, oh God. So if you look here, right, this, this, what I'm trying to show here is like this memory points, you know, I probably could have shown this a bit better, but this address is here, this address is here, this address is here, this address is here. This variable is storing an address, which would be, you know, this one over here. Yeah, you guys are like, I'm a simple, what's that memes? Like, I'm a simple man, I hear house, I think up. That's all of you. So a pointer just stores memory address, memory address. Whew, okay, let's go back to the slides here. All right, so let's start um, let's start using it. So first of all, let's make a little cheat sheet. I'm gonna make a little cheat sheet for you. Jake's pointer cheat sheet. And all of this I'll make available to you. So in a declaration, asterisk means pointer. So int my int, this is a pointer to an int. Okay. But remember I said, remember, 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 all data in memory has an address, right? Remember I said that? All data in memory has an address. So what does that mean? How can I actually, let's get rid of this. Oh, let's, let's leave it. If all data in memory has an address, can I actually see the address? And the answer is yes. So here I just have a bog standard integer called my int. What if I print, right? So let's first print the integer. Whoops. What have I done here? No, that's what I want. Yeah, and then I just need to give it my int. That, that'll print the int, my int pointer to the int. How do I get the address of a variable? Um, we use the ampersand character before the variable. I was just confirming. So ampersand here means don't get the value of the variable, get the address. So this is gonna go into our cheat sheet. Ampersand means it's called the address of operator. Gets the memory address. 
And then we can actually print that, but it, it's not, we're not, um, it's, a, it's a percent P, isn't it? Tom and Sophia, I'm pretty sure. So it's not, we're not printing an integer, we're printing a pointer. So we need to say to printf, expect a pointer now. And if we run this, hopefully that all works. There you go, fantastic. My int stores 10, and we can actually see where that address is in memory. And that is the real address in my max memory of where the integer number 10 is stored. Isn't that, that's really cool, I think. Add waif, does a pointer have an address? The answer is yes, but let's not go too crazy <laughs> right now. This pointer does not have an address, right? Because it is the address of this integer. Um, but if I make a pointer, then it does have an address. Um, now, now full, nay full, now full. If we do the same thing, so if you run the same code, we would probably get a different address, 100%. It's very likely because you're on a different operating system. You've got different things in your memory. Um, you got different programs running. You've got a different amount of memory. So absolutely. In fact, if I run this, if I restart my computer and run it again or do something, I'll probably get a different, I'm, I'm not going to probably get a different address. Oh no, I do. I get a different address even in between runs. I ran the program again and I got a slightly different address. Although, you know, if you do it quick enough, it's probably going to be um, similar or the same potentially. So what does, someone's asking, what does like this, this represent this, this, this pointer? Just remember pretty simply, there's a lot of memory, right? You can imagine this is four. And if we go all the way down, blah, 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 scroll, scroll, scroll. Eventually one of them is going to be something like that. It's just how we address. Yeah. It's the hexadecimal representation of the memory address, the memory location. Okay, so if you're saying, so when we call scan F and the variable name, we put the ampersand, does that mean it's the same thing? Yeah, absolutely. So it's one of the things that we just have to do in C and we've just sort of skirted over the idea, but it's absolutely right. When you scan F, you're, you're taking, you're taking a value and putting it in the memory of a pointer. So you have to use the ampersand to get the point address. Um, LP says, so what use is this random assortment of numbers and letters to us? So as humans, LP zero, I have, I have zero interest in what this actual address is. What I have interest is, is what I can do with it. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. It's all hexadecimal. Absolutely. Why is it int in front of my int? Why is it int in front of my int? What does the int mean here? This is just my normal integer variable. But remember here, I've not declared a pointer. I have no point. Oh, I, I declared a pointer here. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Here, here. You're talking about down here. Do you know? Do you know, Xiao? This is, yeah, yeah. And that's right, karma. This is saying, I don't want an integer. I want a pointer to an integer. But now think about it, right? Hopefully some of you are starting to, to connect this. I've got an integer. It's got a value. It can store, uh, that, that value has an address. I can create a variable that can store an address. Yeah, exactly right, um, Theran. So that means, what does that mean? Connect these two concepts together. I can store the address of my integer. Do we all agree? Uh, 
I can store the address of the integer, right? Here, I was just printing it out. So I can just say, well, now it's going to be equal to the address of my integer. Is the type of a pointer always int? No, sorry. No, no, no. I can store pointers to any data type. We'll do some other examples. It's a good point because I keep showing them with integers. Um, yeah. This could be a double, for example. It, it, it doesn't matter. Right. Except now I'll need to just print a long float. Oops. Um, line 23, there's a problem because that also needs to be a double now. There we go. Um, uh, and let's not call that my int there. Oops. Right, so we got this double 10.5 and we got the address of that of that double. Does a pointer in the variable of at which point two need to have the same name? Absolutely not. I mean these, you know, I could just call this Jake's pointer. Right? It just needs to be assigned the address of my double. So get the address of some data of some variable and assign it in a pointer. Now, if I want to print, let's print percent D, sorry, percent, percent P, um, Jake's pointer. We can see, right, it's the same value as the address. Why does that keep saying into the, it's there. Look. It's the same address, right? As the address of my doubles address. Cause I signed it. I signed it. We're storing it. Cool. Um, now one now, okay. I'm going to be again, completely honest with you all. This is another thing that's going to cause confusion and it's kind of stupid that it's like this. So it's not your fault that it's confusing but it's just the way it is and there's nothing we can do about it. Don't blame me, don't blame Sasha, blame whoever wrote the C syntax. If I have a pointer, and this is that my third thing in my cheat sheet. If I have a pointer, the asterisk D ref, D, I can't spell it, D references it. It gets the it gets the value of a pointer. So, but it depends on the context. So the, the asterisk here means if I declare it, it's, it means it is a pointer. If I'm using it, it means get the value of an address. What I'm trying to say here is that I can actually print, let's not have, oh no, let's, we want that. I can actually print F Jake's pointers value is a percent long float and it's the value of Jake's pointer. So what do we expect this line to print out?
Well done, everyone. Well, the two of you that have... Exactly. So it, it finds that pointer, gets the memory address, follows it to the actual value it stores, and then accesses it. So if we compile this and we run this, we get that 10.5. Jake's pointer's value is 10.5. It's the value of my double, not the name my double. And that's sort of the full life cycle of pointers. I mean, that's sort of it. Everything else now is just um, playing around with these ideas. So again, the asterisks in this case, if we go to our cheat sheet, if I have a pointer, the asterisk D references the address. So it gets the value of a pointer. Um, so it follows it and gets it. So what I want to do, what I want to do here is whiteboard this with you because I think that's really helpful. So let's get the code up and the whiteboard up. Let's make this a bit narrower. Hopefully you can read all of this okay. And then actually let's, um, okay. So still like this that we can zoom in a bit more. All right. So Let's, let's do, let's clean this up a bit. Let's do something like that. And let's put some more data in this. You know, this can be five, this can be six, this can be, whoops, what have I just done here? This can be seven, this can be eight, this can be nine, right? So I have a bunch of memory addresses and let's run through what's happening. Um, what's happening here. Uh, in fact, we can actually call this main because it's pretty much main and let's maybe give this a bit more space, right? Whatever. That's fine. All right. So first what happens, we, we ask for a double, um, called my double and it gets um, the value 10.5. So remember, if a program needs some memory, what it does is it asks the operating system. It doesn't know about all the memory. It asks the operating system. The operating system might say, okay, Mr. Program pointers dot C, um, the memory address um, 0x0002 is free. You can use that. Here it is. So the, the OS gives us an address. That's what happens. And it might give us, you know, some address. Let's just say it's 002. So we put 10.5 in the address we were given. Right? That's how it's always worked. We've just never spoken about the idea that it has an address as well. But, I mean, it sort of makes sense because how else would the operating system tell us where to put the data? There needs to be some way to look the data up and to, and to refer to the data. Uh, LP, I don't get the question. Was the terminology that point the star re reassigns the pointer? We'll talk about that in a second. Let me, I'll keep going here. Maybe reframe your question if you can. Oh, I'm waving. That's weird. Um, so we get, so the operating system says, sure, Jake, oh, this program, you can put 10.5 in this, this address. So we do that. We then have, we can then, you know, access it and, and we can print the value. So by default, if I print an, a, 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 a variable, we print the value, but I can actually say, um, 
Don't print the value, print the address. That's all that this M ampersand does, right? If you think of memory as a value and an address, the ampersand just lets us say print the address rather than the value. It's that simple. All right. Here, we're actually making a pointer. Um, we're doing a few things, right? We're making a pointer to a double and we're assigning it a value. So interestingly, right, this is where, um, so Jack, Jackie says, I do know it's, uh, uh, asterisk seems to assign the pointer, but calling seems confusing. So calling this is confusing. Is it, it yeah, it's, I guess we could call it, we should put that there. Cause that was meant to be when I was printing the actual pointer before, sorry. I guess you're, you're right there, Jackie, if that's what you were talking about. It's cause I changed, I changed the printf, but I didn't change the string. Um, line 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just confusing because the, uh, the that, uh, that, this symbol does two things with pointers. Yeah. So you don't know, you don't need a pointer variable to find the address of a variable. You just use the ampersand. That's correct, RN. But I can also then say, if I can store a double, if I can store an integer, the question is, can I store a, an address? And the answer, the answer is yes, with a pointer. So here I also, again, I ask the operating system, can I have enough memory to store an address, not a double, not an integer, an address. And the operating system says, sure. At 0, 0, 0, 006, you can store a pointer. And what's the value of the pointer? Well, I want it to be the address of my double. My double was over here, 10.5. We'll put the name in it as well. This was, this was called Jake's pointer. Um, so we get the address of this, which is 0x002, and we store that as our value here. Which means this is now a pointer. Whoops. Oh, yeah, X. This is now a pointer to that value. Okay, does that make sense? So the star in line 20, the asterisk in line 26 means assign pointer. It means, it, this means declare a pointer to a double. Line 30 means dereference the pointer. Juno's out. Yeah, yeah. So this would need, yeah, yeah, you're right. This would like, I'm just abstracting this. So these aren't to scale, right? This requires more very more size than this, for example. LP. Yeah, absolutely. You can see where this is going. So June House says, this means we've got two addresses, but the same da data. So yes and no, right? Here's the trick. How many times did I need to store the actual value 10.5? I mean, if we look at the diagram, how many times um, do we actually see Yeah, just once. But I have a I have two references to it. I've got the reference here and I've got the reference here. Exactly. Whew. 
All right, so now I've got, let's do a poll. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Why can't I ask? Oh, okay. How are we going? Exactly right. No, full. Okay, this is really good. So 62% so far saying, I think I'll get it soon. That's fantastic. I don't expect anyone to really get it now unless you've maybe seen some of these ideas before. 22% of you are saying, I've, you know, I'm really not sure. That's also okay. It'll sink in. It'll take a bit of time. Um, and 17% are saying easy, which is, which is good. I'm pretty happy with that poll. That's, that's what we want. Um, Okay, Natalia, what a fantastic question. That, I mean, yeah, beautiful, 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 beautiful. I'll get to that in a second though. I wanted to say one more thing to really um, throw another spanner in the works, right? If we look at Jake's pointer, it stores a pointer, right? We're happy with that. But what I just wanted to, to, to make clear is because it's a variable, right? It itself has its own address. Does, does that make sense? Right? And if we look here, it's the same thing. 10.5 has the address ending in two. The pointer also has an address ending in six. And we can actually print... Um, the address of the pointer. So this is not going to be the same as, whoops. And it's gonna be a different address because it's gonna be where the actual pointer is saved. Uh, let me put a... Uh, and we should see that, uh, yeah. See, it's a different value, right? So. Jake's pointer stores this address, which is the same as this address, but the address of the pointer is slightly different. You can actually see that it's, it must be very close in memory. It's only a, it's only a few bits over. The address of an address of an address, <laughs> you're exactly right. You start getting, you start getting the idea of why um, pointers are confusing. In fact, if you want a quick, um, a, an interesting anecdote, um, sometimes in programming, and I, I, I've done this before, you need to store um, uh, like a, a, you know, a pointer to a pointer. Um, this is, this is valid and sometimes you, it helps to do it, but um, pointers in C cause um, so many bugs because they're hard to deal with that NASA in their programming guide um, completely disallow double pointers um, because yeah, it's with, with the manual memory management in C it's too much ma uh, human effort. We make too many mistakes basically. And so they've just NASA just say absolutely not allowed to do this. Um, but one, one demand, one level pointers are okay. Exactly right. Dylan, the pointer saw an address, but it's a variable. So that means it itself has a pointer, has an address. Um, and Divakar says, so a separate pointer could store the address of a pointer, but that's, that, yes, that's exactly what's happened here. My pointer is a pointer storing the address, oh no, that's of, an, of a double, but yes, it absolutely could. Yeah, it absolutely could. Jake's 
you know, second pointer could store the address of Jake's pointer. It could even just store the value of Jake's pointer, which is going to be that first address. Can you have a self-referencing pointer? Yeah, I don't see why you couldn't. You probably could, and I'm sure there's some weird use case for why you want to do it, but I don't, I don't know it off the top of my head. But it's a good question. Uh, the the uh, this percent is just because I didn't have a new line. I think I, I I spoke about that quickly before. It's just my my terminal doing that. Yes, this second pointer will also have an address. Put it simply, guys. Anytime you have a variable, you've got an address because you've got a pointer. You've got, yeah, you've got an address because you've got, you have to have the, the, you need to store it somewhere. Okay, but we've got only a few minutes and there was one thing I think was Natalia that said, yeah, N Natalia um, said something excellent that I just want to point out. There's two things I just want to point out. I promise they're not going to be too heavy though. So do you remember when we had this half? Um, business, we weren't able to have a function that had the same reference to the integer or the double. Now, you know, it'll be a double now. We weren't able to do this. So how could I get around this limitation? I don't want to make a duplicate of the variable right, of the value. How do I get around this? Who can think of, who's going to make the connection here? What can I do, right? I don't want to pass in the, the double and I want to be able to manipulate it in other locations. Natalia says Jake's pointer then. Yes, but can you elaborate? Can you elaborate? Oh, Theron, absolutely fantastic, yeah. We don't pass the double. What if we pass the pointer to the double? Beautiful, that is beautiful. How do we do that? It's actually really simple. We say, I don't want to pass in a double. I want to pass in a pointer to a double. Okay. And then I say, well, don't, um, now X is a pointer though. This is the problem. Now X is a pointer. So don't change the address of the pointer, change the value of the pointer. Get the value of the pointer. And so now if we hook this all up, we've got double my double equals 10.5. I, I print the value out. My double is, is that value. I call half and I give it my double. And I just print out the value again. And let's just, for the sake of it, oops, comment the rest of this out. What's wrong with this? Oh, uh, so I got it. Yeah. Yeah. I need to pass the address of my variable instead. Right. Cause it needs an address now, a pointer. And if we run this, this is amazing. Look at this. The double started off as 10.5. That's what we'd expect. And we print it out here. We then call the procedure called half. Now we don't pass in 10.5, which gets copied and we get a new version of it, a new copy of it. We pass in the address of that 10.5, right? We pass in the address. We can change the value at that address, right? Because remember an ampersand, if it's, I've got a pointer, the amp, the, sorry, the, the, the asterisk dereferences it. It gets the value of the pointer and can change it in place. So I assign it to five. I print out that value and then it's printing at five. But then what's key here is that when I print out my double in main, 
It is also five. It's also five. This is not possible without pointers in C. So are, are our minds blown or how we, how we, how we coping? Yeah, we're using the pointer in a function to change the value, but it's changing for anyone who has the address of that value, right? Because remember, my double is just a pointer to a value. Let's put this down here. Okay, chat's really quiet. So I don't know if this is a good sign. I'm assuming it's a bad sign, but <laughs> the heart broke, heartbroken. It's not a bad sign. I, I, I think you're all, um, oh, you can, oh, the message is gone. We love retracting messages. Um, yeah, it's, it's probably, you're probably wrapping your brains around a little bump. When is the memory block for my double freed up? Okay, fantastic question. In this case, right? So there's two times memory or there's three ways memory gets cleared in C. Um, one, when a function ends, any local variables get deleted. Two, when the program ends, all memory gets cleared. And three, I can manually clear stuff, with, which we talk about later in the course. But in this case, it's just going to end when main ends and when the program ends. We'll clear that my double memory. Madonna's processing it. That's completely normal. Soph says, is this why we're not allowed to use global variables in 1511? <laughs> Broken heart. Um, this is not why um, we're not allowed to use global variables. Even if we didn't teach you pointers, we wouldn't teach you global variables. The reason we don't like global variables is because um, there's no way to keep track of who's manipulating the data and it can cause our programs to, to sort of run out of... Um, to just fall apart logically because we have no concept of ownership and, and things like that. Whew. Okay. Pretty good timing. I'm really happy with how the lecture was timed. This is, I gotta say, it's, it's, I get it. it it's heavy, it's heavy content. Um, it will sink in. Um, yes, I will show you my, um, I'm just thinking, do I use it to get you guys to come back on Wednesday? No, it's okay, I'll show it to you. So I've got a, um, oh my God, how do they reach it? A GMMK Pro with, um, inky black switches. I built it during the, the pan, in, during the lockdown. I'm from Melbourne. And so I had um, the long lockdown. So I, during one of the lockdowns, I built the keyboard. I lubed every switch, every, I redid all the stabilizers. So it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful keyboard. Um, okay. Yeah, it's a lot of content, a lot of cool stuff. Very, very powerful stuff. You might not see it just yet, but what, what this allows us to do is really awesome. And we're going to do some of that in 1511. Um, so it's very exciting. One more thing I wanted to just really quickly talk about. It's it's not going to do your head in, I promise. Why the other The other reason why pointers are so cool, right? Remember, if I call a function, I've got to copy the double. Well, doubles are still kind of small. What if the data I'm storing was massive? First of all, let's delete all of these. Oh my God. I'm not doing well here. What if the data that I'm storing is massive, right? This is like my big blob of data. It could be an image, for example. Images can be sort of memory that is really large arrays, basically. The reason why pointers are so cool, like to, to copy this, right? If I wanted to pass this to a function, 
Imagine how long it would take for the operating system to free up enough memory to duplicate all of that. The reason why pointers are so cool is because if I just pass the pointer in, it's like, oh, there we go, I've passed it in. Right, so pointers let us refer to huge blobs of memory really quickly. Anyway, that's the last thing I wanted to say. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's lecture. Um, I don't know if we've got a feedback. Um, I don't know if there's any, well, I can, do we want, do you want me to get a feedback form up? Um, if you could be bothered, I'll do it. I just got to quickly copy one. Give me one second. There we go. Um, oh, we don't need, we don't need that question. Okay. And then let me just share this, shorten the URL, copy this. Oops, put this here. All right, there's some feedback. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'll pass it on to, <laughs> to Sasha, uh, but I, I'm also giving the lecture on Wednesday, so I'll, I'll use the feedback. Look, the thing is, so it's completely, I just wanted to say one more time, if you're like, holy crap, this is nuts. This is getting out of control, slow down. It is completely normal to feel that way, I promise. It took me, you know, a while to get my head around pointers when I was learning them for the first time. It will sink in, I promise. Um, watch the lecture content again. We've got activities coming up in the Tut Labs this week. It's gonna be great. Um, pointers are really cool. You know, it's really sad. I think, well, I don't wanna be judgmental, but a lot of programmers go off into industry. And sometimes, you know, if they didn't do C in their intro programming and they didn't do C, in other courses, sometimes they actually never really grasp pointers. And that's such a shame if you're gonna be programming seriously, or even sort of, you know, if you wanna, if you're an engineering student and you wanna do some systems programming, there's always pointers involved. And I always find it a bit of a shame when people don't go through the, the struggles of learning um, and getting your head around pointers, because it is so important and it's not that hard. Well, it is hard, but it'll, you'll get there, but it's so valuable. So. Be kind to yourselves. Don't beat yourself up if you don't get it. Give yourself the time to understand it. Thank you so much to Sophia and Tom. Thank you. Um, I don't know who else to thank. Thank you to the operating system for always playing nice with us, giving us memory when we need it. Thank you to all of you for coming along. The Kahoot was fun. I hope you had fun. I'll see you on Wednesday if you're able to make it live. And then, um, oh, and then next week is the midterm break. And then Sasha's back. So... Um, Anyone missing Sasha, don't worry. I'm only here for one more lecture. Thank you all so much. I had a really good time. Um, remember, go to the forum with your questions. Play around with the code yourself. That's the way you learn. You learn by doing things. See you on Wednesday, everyone. Thanks, everyone.